note that we now have learned already two quite related approaches to think about the consistency or inconsistency and the asymptotic bias of an OLS estimator. So the first approach which we already started in chapter one was basically to think about whether there are some unobserved confounders and how they bias your estimator by drawing a causal graph. Now, for example, in our simulation, we could draw this graph. We know that x2 influences x1 and also directly y. And if we don't add x2 in our linear regression, then it's an unobserved confounders. And basically, our coefficient of the beta 1 also estimates basically the, the effect from this indirect uh, relationship, not only the direct causal effect of beta 1. And if x2 influences both x1 and y positive, then we will have a positive bias because we have this positive indirect relationship. So that's one way to think about why an OLS estimator can be biased, thinking of confounders and drawing these graphs. The other way to think about is that we basically write down, uh, think about what's in the error term of this regression. If we write down a short regression, and for example, if we know that beta, uh, that x2 is part of it, then we see that there's a correlation between x1 and, and the error term. And if we have a positive correlation, that's a simple linear regression, we also will have a positive bias. So both approaches are very similar. And thinking either the first or the second approach should basically give you the same result. So if you think uh, that you have a bias if, by drawing a, a graph and thinking about the confounders, you should also come to the same conclusion if you just look what is the, what is part of the error term in the regression you want to estimate and it's correlated with your variable of interest and you should basically get the same result that there's a bias or not. However, there are some examples where one or the other approach is more convenient or nicer. So typically I, I like these causal graphs more when they can be used uh, because in particular, they help to distinguish between confounders and channel variables, and they make it more clear which exact cause and effect you want to measure. However, there are problems that lead to a bias which cannot so nicely be illustrated with a uh, graph. One example is if your explanatory variable is measured in a noisy way, so you, you don't matter the exact x1, but x1 plus some random noise. Um, then one can show that your OLS estimator has a so-called attenuation bias, which means that your estimator is always closer to zero or systematically closer to zero than your true coefficient beta 1. And this attenuation bias can actually be quickly seen if you uh, think about the correlation between your error term and the explanatory variable and the bias formula. Um, however, it's not so easy to show the attenuation bias in a, in a graph like this. So that would be an example where this thinking about endogeneity and the bias formula is more helpful. And that's the reason why I have shown you both approaches, and not only the causal graphs, even if this has led to a lot of more definitions and you may already think at this point wow so many uh, theoretical concepts when do we get back to applications and the good answer is we will now come back to applications <laughs>